Coming up on Sports Showtime, we've got everything for your weekend football preview against Auburn. Plus, our in-house expert, Seth Lewis, brings you your weekly NOLA Corner update. Sports Showtime starts right now. <laughs> Welcome to Sports Showtime, your sports for sports news and highlights, all from students just like you. I'm Ryan Brumley. And I'm Alex Cheney, filling in for Morgan Jennings. Ryan, we've got a pretty good show today. Uh, I like the spread. Spread? That movie with Ashton Kutcher? Inappropriate, Alex. And you can do better on topical references, to be fair. Ryan, you're ridiculous. Let's get this show on the road. The number two LSU football team takes on Auburn in Jordan Hare Stadium this Saturday in the 2012 conference opener. LSU enters the contest following a dominating performance against Idaho, where both the offense and defense lit up the scoreboard. The Tigers look to do the same against Auburn, a team that hasn't really been a threat since Cam Newton left for the NFL in 2011. Head coach Les Miles said his guys are treating the Auburn team like it's the team that won a national title two seasons ago. We've played some really good Auburn defenses around here but in the past. This would be like one you know, quality team, well coached, drilled. Miles said a mark of a good team is one that can succeed on the road regardless of the opponent, as LSU looks to do on Saturday. I think a team with a, a good, you know, character and a good uh, strength just plays well on the road. They just play how they are. It's the same 100 yards. It's just happens to be a different stadium. Kickoff against Auburn is set for 6 p.m. on ESPN. The LSU-Auburn matchup has always been a lot of fun, so let's take a trip back at some matches from recent years. Last season, number 20, Auburn came into Tiger Stadium and just got thumped. We were introduced to Kenny Hilliard to score a pair of touchdowns on the day, and LSU won 45-10 to in their dominant 2011 regular season. Let's go back to 2010 in Jordan Harris Stadium, where LSU gets in one of my favorite verbs, Cam Newton. They were number six coming in, but ended up losing that one 24 to 17. Cam Newton went on to win the Heisman, and Auburn went on to win the national title. Let's go down to 2008. LSU was number six, Auburn was number 10, and LSU was saw the debut of one of its favorite quarterbacks ever, Jarrett Lee. Jarrett Lee actually got the better of the Auburn Tigers in that one, throwing two touchdowns, and LSU would eventually win 26 to 21. One of the most memorable games ever in Tiger Stadium history came in 2007. LSU taking on the number 18 Tigers at the time featured a great last second catch by Demetrius Bird. LSU won that one 30 to 24. And the last 12 matchups between the LSU and Auburn Tigers, they have faced each other. At least one team was ranked in the top 25. Stick around because Seth Lewis is around the corner the NOLA corner, that is. And the jokes just keep on coming. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Showtime. I'm Seth Lewis here with your NOLA corner update. After two very disappointing weeks for Saints fans, I have some promising news. One, New Orleans got severely outplayed in both games and still had a chance to win at the end. Two, the athletic quarterback streak stops as pocket passer Matt Castle comes into town with his Kansas City Chiefs. The Saints defense talked about the different task of taking on Castle this week. Well, you got a more conventional offense, so, you know, we can start playing more of our defense and not having to worry about, you know, quarterback running, although Castle is very athletic and he can run some. So it's going to be exciting to actually go out there and play against a conventional offense. Uh, maybe it makes it a little bit easier, but not really. Matt Castle's a great quarterback. He's accurate. And I think he has a really good command of that offense, and so it doesn't ever get easy in the NFL. Now, I'm not usually a believer of this in week three, but this game should probably be classified as a must win for the Saints, as Kansas City is the only team in the league with a worse defense than New Orleans after two weeks. The Chiefs' losses haven't been pretty either, with the defeats coming via the Falcons and Bills by an average of 17 points. This should mean Drew Stella Breeze gets his groove back this week. But with all the questions on the offensive line, nothing is guaranteed. Plus, this marks the homecoming of LSU stars Glenn Dorsey, Tyson Jackson, and Dwayne Blow, both, along with former Tigers Tra Travis Daniels. 
So LSU West, AKA Kansas City, might be looking to put on a show for their first performance in the Dome. You can catch all the action and storylines at noon on Sunday on CBS. Now what does a millionaire, a billionaire owner with a Super Bowl winning team plus a rising star with one eyebrow equal? How about fans in the stands for NOLA basketball? The New Orleans Hornets announced on Monday that they've exceeded an average of 12,000 tickets sold per game. This includes season ticket holders along with partial packages as well. This spike in ticket sales success was expected as new owner Tom Benson and first overall pick Anthony Davis has New Orleans buzzing about basketball for a change. Single game ticket availability was released earlier today. So you have to be swift in purchasing if you want to see the debut of Mr. Unibrow and other first round pick Austin Rivers and the Hornets as they take on Tim Duncan and the San Antonio Spurs on Halloween. Continuing with the new buzz, my seven week preview of the new New Orleans Hornets, this week we'll focus on newly acquired forward Hakeem Work. Work was the second piece in the July trade with the Phoenix Suns that the Hornets acquired, which also netted the Bayou Bees center Robin Lopez. Work is a seven year vet who has career averages of about nine points along with four rebounds. The biggest highlight of his career though came before the NBA, when Work had the game winning block against Kansas to seal the 2003 National Championship for the Syracuse Orange. And did I mention that was in New Orleans? Hornets general manager Dale Demps said Ward's experience will benefit the Hornets. Veteran that will add to our front court depth. Um, he's been in the league. He's uh, has the ability to score with his athleticism and quickness. And uh, we look forward to watching him play this year. Ward is projected to be the backup at both forward spots for New Orleans. That's it for this week's NOLA Corner. Back to Alex and Ryan. Thanks, Seth. LSU baseball announced Joe Broussard will miss the entire 2013 season as a result of an injury to his throwing arm. Broussard suffered an ulnar collateral tear in his elbow while pitching in the Cape Cod lead this summer. He will undergo surgery Friday to repair his elbow. Following the surgery, Broussard will begin re rehabilitation and will return to the mound next season with two years of eligibility remaining. Head coach Paul Maneri said, quote, he'll go through rehab and will welcome back in 2014 season. The LSU volleyball team is coming finally home this Friday after 11 straight road matches to start the season. Juan Gonzalez reports. In 2012, the Lady Tigers have faced many struggles at the start of this season. Head coach Fran Flory has adapted to the unpredictable circumstances that the team has faced. Adversity seems to strike us quite often in the fall. They had to face one of the toughest non-conference away schedules, manage injuries, and not playing at home due to Hurricane Isaac. Playing at home is something the LSU volleyball team is looking forward to. You know, we have a great home record, as most teams at LSU do. You know, the LSU fans are key to team success. Coach Flory explained the importance of the fans to LSU. Our attendance is one of the best in the SEC, and certainly we anticipate the fans will come out and, and watch us and cheer us on and create that environment for us because that little edge makes a huge difference. All in all, the team is ready for this weekend. I think we turned a big corner last weekend, and hopefully getting to play on our home court this weekend will just will take off. In the days leading up to tomorrow's game, despite all the adversity, the Lady Tigers were just ready to come home. From Tiger TV, I'm Juan Gonzalez. The Lady Tigers finally have their home opener tomorrow, taking on SEC rival Kentucky at 7 in the PMAC. Still to come in this dated references-themed sports showtime episode, Bill Big Football Weekend coming up for the Tigers. We'll tell you how to stay updated throughout the week on which Tigers quicks the victory. And we tell you about the newest member of the Auburn student section. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Showtime. You know, Ryan, there's something LSU fans making the trip to Auburn this weekend should keep in mind. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. There's a new addition to the Auburn student section this year, their version of the Steelers' terrible towel. They call it the Chiz Rag. That's right, Chiz Rag. And what could be a tough defeat, the Rag should help them, you know, keep comfort after a tough loss to the Tigers on Saturday night. Well, you know, Ryan, we have a couple guys from the station going out to Auburn this weekend, and hopefully while I'm there, I'll be able to meet a nice little sorority girl, and we can use our Chiz Rags together in a symbiotic Chiz Ragism, if you know what I mean. I'm done. Well, that's all we've got for today. Thanks for tuning in to Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. You can catch the highlights or watch the full episode online at TigerTV.tv. Also, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for all the latest news.
That's right. And if you're staying in town this weekend, we'll make sure to keep you posted. We'll see you on Monday. You can catch our weekly programming Monday through Thursday at 6.15 for everyone traveling to Auburn.